everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're gonna to talk about some basic sports photography. Let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm scheduled to shoot a college football game tomorrow, and I figured I was setting up my camera and I'd let you guys kind of follow along and I'd, I'd walk you through this process. Now, a couple quick disclaimers. Number one, this is gonna be a basic to intermediate video. So if you've done sports photography for years, this might not be for you. Secondly, I'm gonna be demoing on a Fujifilm camera, but if you use any camera brand, everything I talk about will totally apply. However, you might wanna get your camera manual out because some of the buttons and dials may be in different locations and it'd be easy for you to quickly reference what I'm talking about and relate it to your camera. So the first thing I wanna talk a little bit about is exposure, right? How do we get a properly exposed image? And moreover, how do we not have to worry about exposure when we're shooting sports? So our exposure pie is made up of your aperture, our shutter speed, and our ISO. And together those three things control how bright or dark our images are. Now I would argue that of those three things, the two most important for sports photography are aperture and shutter speed. Aperture is super important because we usually want to blur the background in a sports photo. We want the player to be sharp and crisp, the ball to be sharp and crisp, but everything else to kind of melt away in the background. And this actually brings me to the first thing we can set on our camera. I'm gonna put my camera on the manual mode so I have full control. And then I'm gonna adjust my aperture to my widest open or lowest number. In this case, I'm using the Fujifilm F2 200 millimeter lens, but whatever your lens has, adjust your aperture by spinning one of your dials to your lowest number. What that's gonna do is really two things. Number one is it's gonna give us the most amount of light gathering capability, so our lens will be letting through as much light as it can, which is great for those dimly lit games. And secondly, it's gonna give us our shallowest depth of field or most blurry background, which also is good. So really, I don't can't think of many exceptions when I'm shooting action sports that I'm not gonna be using the widest open aperture or lowest number. The second thing I want to worry about is shutter speed. Now, this can depend on what sport you're shooting, it can depend on how long your lens is, all kinds of things like that. But in general, with sports, we want to be using shutter speeds faster than one one thousandth or one two thousandth of a second. For me shooting football tomorrow, I'm going to think of one two thousandth as the slowest shutter speed I can use without risking having some blurry parts of the photo. Now, this is all a success rate thing, right? It doesn't mean that if we use one two thousandth of a second that a hundred percent of our photos are going to be sharp, but it means that we're going to have a higher percentage of sharp, crisp images than if we compared that to say one one thousandth of a second. There will still be situations where one two thousandth is not fast enough to stop all motion. However, it's a good starting place for me. So to make it simple, I'm gonna get that set on my camera ahead of time. I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed to one two thousandth. So now I'm at one two thousandth of a second at f2, which is my widest open aperture. Again, if you don't have f2, you'll be at one two thousandth at f5.6 or one two thousandth at f4, whatever your lowest number aperture is. Now finally, this brings me to ISO. ISO is purely a control of how sensitive your sensor is to light. It's actually not, there's some other things that are going on behind the scenes, but essentially it's how sensitive your sensor is to light. And ISO doesn't really have any creative control to it. It's really just the thing that we wanna leave as low as possible, because the lower our ISO, the more quality we're gonna have in our images. But it also is the only way that we're gonna get properly exposed pictures. So what I like to do is I put my ISO on auto. Now, a lot of different schools of thought with sports as far as what mode we use. I'm a manual mode, set my aperture, set my shutter speed, and let the camera pick my ISO. To do that, I'm gonna push the ISO button on my camera, and you should see that at one end of your ISO controls, you should have something where you can select auto ISO. Now, when you go into auto ISO, some newer cameras are gonna give you an ability to limit it, to not let it go too high or not let it go too low. I'm gonna leave my default sensitivity on my lowest ISO of 160, my lowest native ISO, and I'm gonna let the camera go as high as it wants. In this case, all the way up to 12,800. Now, I know that tomorrow, I'm shooting a game that starts at noon, so I'm gonna have no trouble with light. There's gonna be plenty of available light, even at one two thousandth of a second at F2, my ISO is probably gonna be down at the base, okay? Now, I'm gonna have to watch this because our ISO can't go lower than 160 in this case. Your camera might not go lower than 100 ISO. If I get out there in the field 
and I'm at one two thousandth of a second at F2. And the ISO can only go down as far as the ISO can go down. I need to look at the pictures my camera is shooting. And if they're too bright and my camera's using the lowest ISO it can, I'm gonna need to dial up my shutter speed to a four thousandth or an eight thousandth of a second, okay? So don't be afraid to do that. Your, your shutter speed can always go faster. It's the one one thousandth or one two thousandth you wanna think of as the slowest option. Additionally, if you're shooting a dimly lit game Game. Say it's a night game, you're using an entry level camera, maybe you have a lens that only goes down to f5.6, something like that. You can toy with the shutter speed a little bit. I'm telling you one one thousandth or one two thousandth, that doesn't mean you can't try one five hundredth or one one thousandth or one seven fiftieth of a second. It just means that your success rate, right, your percentage of sharp photos is gonna go down dramatically. So just know it's all a little bit of a, a, um, an up and down kind of seesaw game, right? As that ISO goes up, we're gonna get less quality, but we're gonna allow our shutter speed to be a little bit faster and it all kind of comes around, okay? So for me, one two thousandth of a second, auto ISO at F2, that's gonna be my point where I go into the game tomorrow. Now, one other thing I wanna mention here is make sure that your exposure compensation, that's basically an override for the camera's exposure control, is zeroed out. Very, very important. Um, exposure comp, if it's set to plus three, no matter what you do, your camera will be taking images that are too bright all the time. So be sure that that little needle for your exposure compensation is set to zero. If you don't know where that is, check your camera manual under exposure compensation, you should see it. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about in relation to exposure is our metering mode. This is very important. Your metering mode, or some cameras call it photometry, controls when you look through the viewfinder and when the camera looks into the scene, what is it gonna look at in your photo to judge how bright or dark your image should be? Now, a lot of you may have messed with this before, but anytime we are using an automatic mode on our camera, you might say, wait, Forrest, we're on manual. We, we are on manual, but we're on manual with auto ISO. So that's an automatic mode of our camera. Whenever we're in automatic mode, we wanna change our metering mode or our photometry to your multi-segment metering mode. Now this goes by a lot of different names. Canon calls it evaluative, Nikon calls it matrix, some cameras call it zone metering, Fuji calls it multi-metering. In your manual, look up your multi-segment or smart metering mode, and that's what we wanna set our camera to. If you are on spot meter or center weighted meter, your exposures, your brightness, darkness values, image to image to image are gonna be dramatically different. So now that we've talked about exposure, let's now get switch gears onto some other settings. And the next one is gonna to have to do with focusing and shooting. The first thing is our focus mode. In sports, I always am gonna be on the continuous autofocus mode or AFC. Now Canon does call this AI servo, but every other brand calls it AFC. Regardless of the acronym, it stands for continuous autofocus. Now what it means is as long as you are holding down your button on the front of the camera or the back of the camera, wherever you focus, I'll put a link up there in the corner to check out my back button focus video. But as long as you're holding down the focus button, the camera will be continually refocusing on whatever's in your focus point. This is so critical because if you're photographing someone running towards you or away from you, you wanna hold down that focus button and allow the camera to continually be refocusing as your subject moves towards or away from you. So I'm gonna set my camera to continuous AF. Also, I'm gonna set my drive mode to continuous drive mode. Now, what is that? That means that not when we're focusing, but when we're shooting, as long as we hold the button all the way down, the shooting button, the shutter button, the camera is gonna continually take pictures until we release the shooting button or our memory card bogs down or whatever happens, right? But basically the camera is gonna do its best to shoot as many photos as quickly as possible. For that, you should have a little drive button on your camera or sometimes it looks like three little boxes. You're gonna hit that button and you're gonna wanna set yourself to the continuous high mode. You might see three little boxes with an H. That's gonna ensure you're at the fastest your camera can shoot. Now, quick thing I wanna say, with more photos comes more editing. So if you're new to this or you don't wanna edit a bunch, 
It might be good to use the continuous low mode. Usually that looks like three little boxes and an L. Again, check your manual for your specific camera's setup. Um, but you know, if I'm shooting 15 frames per second, if I hold the button down for three seconds, that's 45 pictures that I then have to go edit through later on. So just keep that in mind. Um, sports is all about capturing the moment, right? We wanna make sure we get the moment that's important, but uh, it comes with some editing time. So definitely keep that in mind. All right, couple final things. I'm gonna pop into my menu here. I highly recommend that everybody shoots raw when they're shooting really anything in photography. So I'm gonna put my camera on the raw image quality mode versus JPEG. It's gonna give us more quality, better images. The only exception to this is if you need to do a real quick turnaround between capture and delivery of the files, you might consider shooting JPEG. Just know that raw gives you a lot more flexibility in post-production. You have a lot more ability to edit things in Lightroom or Capture One or whatever software you use. With that, I'm also gonna go down and adjust my white balance to match the lighting in the scene. Do note though that if you are shooting raw, you can change the white balance after the fact. So if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. If you're shooting JPEG though, try to get that white balance as perfect as possible. Another video that I've made in the past that I'm gonna draw attention to is creating a custom white balance. If you're shooting a sporting event in a very, very weirdly lit gymnasium with like old sodium vapor lights and some fluorescence and a bunch of daylight coming through a window, weird situations, there's ways you can set up a custom white balance in your camera that matches the lighting in that scene. So I'll put a link down in the description. You guys can check that out to learn a little bit more about how to make a custom white balance. In this case though, I'm shooting raw. So it doesn't matter too much. And I'm just gonna put it on daylight because I know it's gonna be sunny tomorrow. I shouldn't say no, it is the weather. I think it's gonna be sunny. If it's not, I'll adjust this back onto cloudy or whatever the conditions are that day. A couple other little bonus items I'll say is if you have a longer lens that's a little bit more professional, you may have something on the side of your lens called a focus limiter that will limit the range of focus on your lens. What this does is if you select something other than the full range, you will be increasing your autofocus speed at the expense of not being able to focus at all distances. In this case here, I have full, where the lens can focus from very close to very far, or I have five meters to infinity, where the lens will only focus on things between five meters and infinity. Meaning, if something's four meters away from me, the camera is gonna refuse to focus on it. Shooting tomorrow, I'm gonna have football players close and far, so I'm gonna leave it on full range. But if I was shooting something like Formula One from the stands, and I was a good you know, five meters away from the closest the cars would get, I would totally limit my range to increase my autofocus performance. Lastly, if your lens has optical image stabilization or your camera has optical image stabilization, turn that on, especially if you're hand holding. That's gonna allow you to just cut down on any sort of shake that you are imparting on the camera by just being a human being, okay? I will also say though that our shutter speed should be fast enough to counteract any of that shake, but optical image stabilization is very helpful in these types of situations. All right, everyone, that's all I've got today. If you like this video, definitely hit that like button down below. I would really appreciate it. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. We really appreciate all of you and good luck shooting sports. Uh, it's one of my favorite genres of photography and hopefully it will be for you as well. Thanks everybody.